ATD Warwick has been going just over two years. Uh, the ATD group has been going in excess of 20 years with head office based in Coventry. We've started this place up here in Warwick to keep the machine in in-house. There was a few little projects we were doing which we carried on doing but the company was doing a major engineering quotation and design projects for a major OEM and we took the decision to start this up to do the prototypes. Let's talk about this part Paul. How does it, how is it made? It is uh, 3D printed on uh, very complicated and it takes 60 hours to make and we do four at a time. The part is, is, is that big, we have to initial fill the machine, start the process, 24 hours later refill the machine because it runs out of powder. Okay, so why are you printing it? Purely for weight and uh, aesthetic design because there's break points in there. So a decision was made early on to 3D print it. And then once it's printed uh, and it's then presented to one of your uh, Milli Micron machines, the Milli 700U, yeah. to be machined? To be machined. So uh, we came up with a, a jig to machine it. Um, we decided managed to be able to do it in one operation on the five axis. Um, and perhaps you could describe that? So it's, uh, it's all very complicated jig that clamps it down so there's no flat faces. Part rotates up and we run a probing cycle in several places which does it on rotation on these machines which is we wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Uh, and then we, we, we do that all manually rather than automatic so we can adjust the part to suit and then we fully machine the internals uh, there. which So you machine this, these faces here, all of this? All of this, which is the bearing. And, and then on the end as well? And the, air, the end, which we've managed to put the flat faces and the tapped holes in, which holds the part in position. Um, you keep this machine running unmanned, don't you? We're talking about the five axis now. You've got yeah. several machines from, yeah. from GF. But this particular Milli 700U here, there's two of them being fed by this work partner. Explain how that all works. Uh, so we've run one machine with 10 pallets, the other machine with 10 pallets. Obviously we can mix and match, but that's how we set it up. And we, uh, it runs, we set, go, press go about five o'clock, go home at half five and it's still running in the morning. And then we run separate jobs during the day and run separate jobs at night. Um, how reliable and versatile is this system? How has it improved your productivity? Because prior to you having this work partner, you were loading these machines manually. I we were loading manually. We have got a seven pallet and we decided to go for this system. And it was worth, we waited an extra month for this system to give us an extra six pallets on top of the seven minute for each machine we would have had. And it, it's a, it absolutely excellent. Okay, and it's not just five axis machines that these guys have from GF on the milling front. Let's go and have a look at a three axis vertical and what that's doing. So the three axis vertical, Paul, now this is the Milli 1200. Um, tell us about this model and why it's here and what it's doing. We originally had the older version, which is still running to the day. So we decided to go uh, like for like, but I, we had it fully spec'd up. So we've gone for 20,000 spindle with the HSK, same as the five axis we own, and 60 tool stations. The idea we went, went uh, across that route is, so we do a lot of ball nose and service finishing. So the programs, if we need to run them on the five or on the three axis, it's the same tool and same spindle speed. Okay, so you're telling me this machine is a 20,000 RPM spindle, but it also has a 60 station ATC and about a 1200X axis and sit at a big capacity too. Oh yeah, went full spec, full spec on it. The 1200 we use as well. We don't do any big jobs, but we use a fully utilised. We have four different jobs loaded, all using 20,000 spindle speed. Okay, so tell us about the part that you're making. Uh, this is a mirror that we make. We make 150 of these a week. Um, we've decided to go for the 20,000 spindle speed just for the ball nose surface finish we have to do. As a Mr. Beat since we've started, we run day and night on this particular product. And what about this one? Uh, this is part of a major OEM, parts made on the 5 axis. Uh, again, it's a 20,000 spindle, we machine the back off and it copies the rads from the same, the opposite side, so there's no difference between front side and back side. So you are machining this on here though? Yes, yeah, all, okay. all done on that. So where does the 5 axis come into it though? You're confused. Uh, all, all the operations, the previous operations, the 5 axis, the second operation is done on this machine. But the idea was that everything's done at the same spindle speed, same feed, same tooling, everything. So there's no difference between the top surface that you see there and the back surface. Okay, so how good are these Micron machines in, in your it's opinion? It's absolutely perfect, as a Mr. B. I, I can't think of any other machine on the market that does the spindle speed at all and everything that we want. It's perfect, it's ideal. Can you walk us through what you're doing on this, Paul? Uh, this is a table for a centre console, a machine from Solid Billet. 
Uh, this first side that you're seeing now takes about four hours to machine. Uh, lots of tap tiles, lots of tied up surfaces, lots of stress relieving. And there's a one mil ball nose, 16 times diameter. It's very scary that runs in it for quite a while as well. Okay, what's what's the critical features on here? What are we looking at? Surface finishes, tolerances? S surface finishing, tolerance, and positional as well. And uh, working area, which is the side section that you see here. And this automation system here then, you just load them up and go. This particular run at the moment is 17 and a half hours. So we're home for 15 hours a night, 16 hours. So in Presco, it's still running in the morning. Can you monitor what's happening during that period if you chose to? I have it on my phone and emails it which I uh, monitor. Again, similar here in terms of the machining then. Must be five axis, and if so, why? Must be five axis, because uh, all the angles and radiuses are in there. So in there's a, the D-shape area, there's three different uh, road angles on there. And we, we move at angles as well to relieve the swarf pressure. Okay, how do these machines cope with being with running for such long periods of time and what have you installed on them in order to make them reliable over such long periods? We do daily maintenance but we use a lot of broken tool detection, sister tool, it's just, they're just reliable. Tend, tend to anything that ever goes wrong as if we haven't cleaned anything or done anything like that. Okay now there's some holes in here that I can see, how on earth do you do those? Unfortunately you can't mill them so this is where GF helped us out with our initial purchase of the spark eroder. And what do you know about spark erosion? Me personally, I know absolutely nothing. It, everything was done on spark erosion for me. All the jigs were designed for, from GF. I just passed them off and signed them all off. Uh, they even designed the electrodes. And to be fair, they even came in and programmed the electrodes. I'm still running the program that GF done for the electrodes. And why do you believe it was this machine, that was the, it was the Form E600 that was the, the right one for the job? The job when we when we purchased it the, the Form E600 was slightly bigger than we needed but we, had, we were confident that the, the product was going to expand so we made the investment on the bigger machine. And how long does it run? How long does it take to, to do one of these holes? Where do you make the electrodes? Tell us a little bit more detail. Uh, it takes up to an hour each side to do a hole. Uh, there's four holes in some parts, two on others. It runs ten parts a night. We can do twelve but we, we stick at ten just for the, that's the lifetime of the electrodes. And how important is hole size? Whole side is very important, that's why the electrode, we only run for 10 parts. Uh, but as I say, we machine them all in house, so we've just got the blanks and we just machine them as and when we require them. And um, now we've finished and seen all of the machines that you that you have here from GF, can you tell us how important it has been to, to work with them and that relationship and, and the elements that have really made you be able to achieve what you needed to achieve here? Well, the, the key to it is, is the right people doing the right things from, from GF point. If I want technical advice, I just phone Gareth on, on certain aspects. He's just a phone call away, all his answers. But everything I've asked him to do, they've done above and beyond, even helped me design the workshop for the best layout. And what about the time scales, though? To get all of this in here, we, we, was the customer shouting at you for these parts? Would you have delivery expectations that you needed to meet, that you needed to uh, you know, get GF to support you on? Yeah, they delivered, uh, placed the order uh, the week before Christmas, and they're all in by mid middle of the year up and running. Other, other companies I was getting quotes for, delivery day was about now, so I'm up and running in full production. But on certain things like the Sparker, if that goes down we haven't got another one, but my contingency plan GF will spark parts for me, because it's their program and their electrodes, so it's all easy for me. And um, what's the long term vision? You've come such a long way in such a short period of time. If I come back here in two years time, what am I going to see? Do you think, or do you Expect. Hopefully a lot more investment, so we've got, this is one unit full, we've got a separate unit next door that we can fill up with machines, but my personal thing, I just want to get up and running, full production, and then I'll be after the next project, just to keep myself amused as well as anything else.